Sticking with federal politics, the Greens have reversed course and agreed to back the federal government's watered-down poker machine reforms. The plan will trial bet-limiting technology in the ACT, introduce a cash withdrawal limit from ATMs in gambling venues and provide more counselling services for gamblers. It's a far cry from Labor's full promise after the last election to introduce mandatory pre-commitment on all pokies by 2014. The Greens had been holding out for a policy imposing maximum $1 bets, but they've now abandoned that push. With me in Canberra is the Greens spokesman for gambling, Senator Richard Di Natale. Senator, when the independent Andrew Wilkie announced that he would support this government legislation, you said Clubs Australia will be popping champagne bottles following Wilkie's announcement of support today, and that should tell you everything you need to know about the strength of the reform. So I guess, I guess the clubs can break out the champagne again today, given the Greens capitulation. Well, there's a couple of things there, Lee. Firstly, I agree these are reforms that are a long way from where they need to be. We've been working very, very hard to get genuine reform, reform around dollar bet limits to try and help the most vulnerable people. Uh, it became very clear that the government wasn't going to uh, come at that. Uh, it was spooked by the pokies industry, an industry that makes enormous profits at the expense of vulnerable people. And so we've been working very hard to try and negotiate some improvements to the bill that was originally put to us. We've got one significant improvement. We're going to see the announcement of a National Gambling Research Institute. That's a significant improvement to the legislation because what it means is we'll get the issue of problem gambling on the national agenda. It'll continue to be there. Surely it's and they'll on do the some work agenda. on dollar bet. Well, it's interesting. We haven't heard much about uh, Pokey's reform uh, for months now. Um, what we'll get with this legislation, it, which is a long way from where it needs to be, and we'll continue to campaign for much stronger reform, we get the Commonwealth with a role, at least, in poker machine reform. We get limits on ATMs. We get all machines being mandatory pre-commitment ready. It's a small step forward, but still a long way from where we need to be. In the end, Lee, it was this or nothing. Well, the government made it very, very clear it wasn't going to consider the many compromises we put forward. Okay. And in the, the end, we had to I'm, make a decision about whether this was better than nothing. I'm going to on and on and on. You've, you've faced policy issues before where it's been a case of come up with something or do nothing, and you've chosen to do nothing. What's different about this? I know. We've got to be very clear about that. There are some proposals that take us backwards. And if you're alluding to things like refugee policy or the CPRS, it's very, very clear they were two policy announcements that were actually taking us backwards. This is a small step forward. It's nowhere near where we need to be, but it is at least uh, an improvement, a the small improvement. The original emissions trading scheme wasn't taking us backwards. In fact, it went further than what we currently have, which is what you ultimately voted for. I oh, know that's not true, Lee. Let's be very, very clear about that. We've got a $10 billion investment in renewable energy and energy efficiency that wasn't there under the CPRS. We've got an independent assessment of the targets that are necessary to ensure that we achieve what needs to happen, and that is that we take on catastrophic global warming. No, no, it's very, very clear. The outcome we've got is a much better outcome than the one we would have had under the CPRS, which locked in failure. It was locking in very low targets that weren't going to take us where we needed to be. On this, particular, this on this particular change, you said again when Andrew Wilkie decided he would support it that this government legislation doesn't achieve any meaningful reform, it won't make much of a difference for a problem gambler sitting at the machine. The things that you've announced make some difference around the edges. I'm just wondering why you've signed on to something that you think makes basically no difference to problem gamblers. Well, it doesn't make... Uh, no difference, Lee. It makes a small difference. So let's be clear. We've got this National Gambling Research Institute, which we, which we negotiated. Uh, Andrew Wilkie walked away from reform. He said he was going to bring down the government, and then he swung in right behind them. He had an opportunity to stick with those of us who were campaigning for genuine reform. He didn't do that. It was left to the Greens to mop up his mess. We've done that by ensuring that we get this research institute off the ground. And we've also got I think for the first time the Commonwealth having a role in poker machine legislation, which is a good thing. The question I had to answer was, uh, 
is it better to have nothing at this point in time, and it was very clear that the government wasn't prepared to go any further, or do we at least accept some small okay. incremental gain. On this question of the National Gambling Research Institute, we've had the Productivity Commission do um, some extensive research. There's research that's done all around the world. Um, institutions in Australia, charities, universities do research. Why on earth do we need more research? Surely we understand that gambling is a problem. Because the clubs ran a very deceptive and misleading campaign around things like dollar bet limits. Uh, the government, uh, rather than taking them on, and I mean, we've got a situation where we've got a cashed up lobby group that makes its money at the expense of very vulnerable people and the government wasn't prepared to take them on. It didn't do it in the mining with the mining tax, it hasn't done it here and in the end what we need to do is to get as much information as possible that's evidence based, put it on the table so that when we have the next, next crack at this reform, which the Greens will be leading, uh, we'll, we'll be armed with the information well, that's necessary to try and get change happening. On this question of when it will next happen, the mandatory pre-commitment trial uh, in the ACT is meant to start in February. It won't be ready by then, will it, given how late this is um, coming to the party, given all the things that will have to be put in place? There's every chance this won't be ready before the federal election and therefore it will never happen. No, no, the legislation is very clear. It's about making all the machines mandatory pre-commitment ready. That will happen. Uh, all by February? new poker machines by 2013, by the end of 2013, all new machines will be mandatory pre-commitment ready and all existing machines will be mandatory pre-commitment ready by 2016. So by that point in time, we'll at least have the opportunity for individuals to set their bet limits. Uh, so that's a positive step forward. We'll have ATMs restrictions so that people can't keep taking huge amounts of cash out when they're at a poker machine venue. So those things are small step forwards. But I don't for a second uh, uh, concede that uh, this is nothing, but it is a long way from where we need to be. Senator Richard Di Natale, thank you very much for making time to speak to us. Pleasure, Lee.